All right, this is going to be a very quick introduction to classes and object-oriented programming. If you're completely new to this, you'll probably want to look up some other sources. This is just a quick review of what they are. Um, I highly recommend anything by Daniel Schiffman as a good place to start. Um, the classic example of, of classes is a car, and basically any shared attributes belong in a class, um, like a, a blueprint. So a car has wheels, a car has a steering wheel, a car has seats windows and things like that those are traits that all cars have in common and then you can use that blueprint you can use that class to create objects and those objects will have all those traits but they'll also have their own things mixed in like a brand name or a color or things like that so that's the overall concept and how we're going to use that in here is the same thing so think of these little layers as um or the things that we've been doing like circles, simple lines, and outline shapes all have common things such as this variable num shapes or we keep doing this over and over again. Anything that we're repeating a lot, anything that might be shared across all kinds of crystals can be put into a class, into a blueprint, and we can use those to more efficiently create those crystals so that we don't have to repeat all of that stuff, especially like this stuff, over and over again. And we can create simple line objects and circles objects. And you can just, that's exactly what we've been doing. You can think of what we end up with here. This is a perfect example. This is the circles object drawn. So, but we can use a class to create this object. So it's probably best to just jump in and start showing you what I mean. And um, this is going to require uh, that we create a new file. So over here in our root folder, let's create a new file and call it, um, what am I going to call it? I'm going to call this layers.js and save it. Great. And in layers, we want to define our class. And we're going to call it uh, layer and give it curly braces. And so now we're going to describe our blueprint. And basically, we're just going to list the stuff that we've been using all along. Uh, but we're going to do it slightly differently. So. For instance, this dot sides equals sides is something that we can do, okay? Um, oh, sorry, this needs to be in a function called, uh, cons oops, constructor. What constructor does is uh, it runs itself anytime we create a new layer. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna create this object and, and the way we're gonna do that is create a new layer blueprint or we're gonna use the layer blueprint to create this, in other words. So we're gonna say, hey layer, fire me up a new layer object. And one of the attributes I want you to be, to have is this.sides. I want you to have a variable inside of you called sides. And the way we assign it to this layer is just use this keyword, and then we give it the value we want. Let's see what else that we can pull into here. Um, something else that we use a lot is this num shapes thing. Um, why don't we pull that in? So we're just trying to find all the common elements. And instead of const num shapes, we want to tie it to this blueprint. So we use the keyword this. And it's always, well, for now, let's set a default. We can always change this. Let's set it to sides. So let, let me just, um, yeah, we'll just do this for now. And now, Let's run, let me show you how you use this. So in our draw loop here, we're not gonna do anything uh, but console log something. We're going to create a new layer. We're gonna say layer equals new layer object, okay? And then we're going to console.log what layer is. So layer is something that we've described as a blueprint. It's a class. And whenever we create a new one, when we say new, it runs this function. It, it is always called constructor. It knows that it's called constructor. We cannot change that name. And when it does, it's going to create an object and assign these variables to these values, these values to these variables, all right? So let's see what that looks like. First of all, we need to include this in our dealy here. So let's add it, script, oh my. It's hard when the microphone is in your way. Equals 
layers.js. Okay, so now it'll be included. And when we run this, we should see some stuff in our console side. Sides is not defined. Oh, right. Just you have to do it that way. Cool. So down here, you should see that we have a layer object. It has six set to num shapes as well as sides. Perfect. So these are being created correctly. Now it's going to take a little bit more work before this makes complete sense. Um, so why don't we do another thing here? Um, well, let's just let's just keep going, and then this will hopefully make sense. So our goal for right now is to stop repeating ourselves, and we're going to pull up anything that is repeated across these into layers.js. Okay. So something else we might put in there is the angle. We keep doing that over and over again, right? So this dot angle equals 360 divided by the um, number of shapes. Okay, cool. Um, lots of different crystals might have use for our steps out variable. It's always starts off at eight, we can change it later. Well, that means that we can also set um, a single step, right? That distance of each step is always equal to our um, radius times, or divided by, sorry, this dot steps out. That's something we've done before. Why don't we also put in there the, the thin stroke Remember when we choose between one and three? Why don't we do that? So we can always have those. So these are things that all crystals can use. Uh, we also always get a color, um, right? So why don't we call it a layer color and just get random from palette. Cool. All right, that's all stuff we've done before. And we're just borrowing it from here. We're not using these functions right now. We're just using them as a reference. We've taken them and we're putting them in here. I guess we call this stroke color, don't we? My bad. All right, cool. So now we have this blueprint. What you're seeing here is we do some stuff that's kind of common all the time. And then we go in here and we do something different every time. So ellipse, position, shape size, shape size line, start time, step. So we have two parts of each of these functions. One where everything's the same or more or less the same. And one where there's a little bit of custom stuff like this and a little bit more custom stuff, especially when we're drawing. So you, anytime we're doing push and pop, all that stuff is pretty unique to each one. And that's the whole point of making these into separate functions, right? So now we're going to talk about inheritance. And basically what that means is we want to take this as a starting point, but we want to create unique versions of it so that they act a little bit differently. So how does that work? So instead of calling a function circles, where is it? Circles, we're going to create a new class that extends layer. So what this means is that we want to use everything that's used in, that is created here in this constructor. We want to extend all that information into this new thing called circle. And we do that. We also have to have a constructor method here by calling super. And super just says, hey, whatever the thing is that you're being extended from, go get all that stuff, please. And it does that. And right away, we can console.log this dot sides, for instance, because we've ex we've called all this stuff up. It's copied all this stuff into here for us. So let's see see what that does. Without even consoling on logging here, we're going to create a new circles. So circles is the name of the class. We're creating it. What it does is automatically says, hey, I'm going to extend this layer, so I'm going to build one of those. I'm going to copy all that stuff into me, and then I'm going to do whatever I want with it. And right now, all we're doing with it is spitting some stuff out into the console. So let's redo this, and we get six. Perfect. If you're lost, stick with me here. We're going to run through it once everything is built um, in the circles thing, and it's going to make a lot more sense. So back in circles. The other thing we're going to want to do in circles eventually is render it, which means draw it. So now we're able to add functions. 
inside of our class. And this is our this is our draw function basically. So let's just pop it in there. Great. Um, unfortunately, any time that you're going to use um, variables, you have to add this keyword here. And that's any variable related to the parent class layer or this class itself. Um, so things we haven't, so we do have most of this stuff, but like position, we haven't set position yet. And position we're doing here. Um, and shape size. It looks like the rest of that stuff we've already set up here. So we can just set that stuff here. And then make sure we add the keyword this dot position and we've already done it for this dot shape size. Oh, we need to do it for stroke color too. Cool. So stroke color is coming from here. Shape size is something that's custom as, as well as position. Angle is something that's coming from up here. How do we decide what goes where? Anything that is common amongst crystals that could be used by more than one kind of crystal should be in our base blueprint and that is layer. Then we create these objects on top of those shared characteristics. So if we go back to our, our car thing, this is layer and this is circles, simple lines, shape outline. So we've only done one so far. Let's see how it works. We should see in sketch, all we're doing is creating a new circles layer. We're not calling this at all. In fact, watch, we can even delete this. And when we load it up here, oops, shape size is not defined. Where is that? Um, here. We've created it and now we need to call its render function. Okay, cool. We're back to where we started. The difference is that this is a little cleaner and this shared stuff is gonna allow us to create a bunch of different layers um, more easily. We keep track of what's common. We don't repeat it in all of these functions. We're only concerned inside of these new classes that we've baked up uh, with things that are unique to it. So we're, this shape size thing, not gonna be used with other stuff. We're only concerned with it for here. Same with the position. We're going to calculate that differently for other, other uh, classes that we create. So this should be confusing if it's brand new to you. And again, I encourage you to go look up some other stuff, but basically we wanna take a function. We wanna stop repeating ourselves and give us a way to create those objects in, in an organized way. Object-oriented programming allows us to create a base blueprint and then inheritance allows us to inherit those qualities and build on top of them to do what we want. And that's what we've done here. You can continue to build your, um, your system in this way and it is completely fine. But at some point in your programming education, you're going to want to learn object-oriented programming. And this is a, a good example of how we can shift from something that's simple and that works into something a little bit more complicated and a little bit more efficient. Personally, I like to start with something that's simple but works and then work my way up. We could have easily said, hey, looking at this right away, this is an object-oriented you know, solution where each one of these layers is an object and then we're gonna create a crystal, a master crystal object, and it'll be so easy. We'll just draw crystals everywhere. Um, in my case, I get lost if I do that. I have to start simple. I build up and that's what we've done. So if this melts your mind, um, you can choose not to use it right now and continue to do what we were doing. Um, if this is something you're trying to learn, this is a great opportunity um, to further your skills with object-oriented programming.